Uh, today we will uh, discuss about a different topic is boilers. So in the power systems, if you uh, go for the conventional type, from the starting itself, we are using the steam, steam turbines. Okay. So here the boilers plays a vital role in the production of the steam. So without this boiler, it is impossible to produce the steam. So for this purpose, we need a boiler and water and the furnace. So these are the very important things without which we cannot produce the steam. So what is a boiler? So it, if you say simply, we can say that it is a vessel where we will keep some water and we will use some fire to make the water into steam. So, so this steam, the heat energy in the steam is transferred in some way such that we are able to produce the electrical energy. So boiler, it is a vessel. Simply you can say it is a vessel. <coughs> so what is the principle of operation? It is nothing. It is very simple. So we are sending the water inside the boiler and we are uh, uh, giving the fire with the help of the furnace and that fire from where? So we may get from the coal generally, most of the cases coal or gas or some petrol or diesel or some other things. So generally we will use for the coal. So we will uh, burn these things and we will generate the fire and that fire will come in contact with the vessel or the boiler. So whenever <coughs> to the temperature reaches to the required 100 degrees centigrade, so it will become the steam, the water will become the steam. So we will be having some outlet for sending the steam out. So we have to send that steam to the turbine and the turbine will rotate. So remaining process we have discussed so many times. So the turbine, the shaft of the turbine is connected to the shaft of the generator and the generator will, the shaft of the generator will rotate and an EMF is induced. So if you go, now today we will discuss about the boilers, types of boilers. So there are so many types of boilers based on their construction, based on their application, based on their uh, size and, and different constraints, based on their efficiency. So there are boilers we can divide in so many types. There are some types I will tell now. So horizontal boiler, vertical boiler, inclined boiler, fire tube boiler, water tube boiler, externally fired boiler. So horizontal boiler. So in the name itself is there. So it is, it will be, the pipes will be 
the horizontal so it will be horizontal to the ground the water pipes vertical boiler so the pipes will be vertical that means perpendicular to the ground inclined so this is the other case so it will be some 45 degrees like that the pipes will be 45 degrees of angle so five tube boilers so the pipes will be there surrounding these pipes the water will be there in the boiler and the fire will flow through these tubes so that's why it is named as the fire tube boiler and next case is water water tube boiler so this is a reverse case the fire will be surrounding this tubes and water will be passing through these pipes so this is the reverse case so externally fired so the water will be inside and fire will be surrounding and this is externally fired similarly reverse internally fired and force circulation boiler where we can use the pump natural circulation boiler where we are not going to use the pump high pressure boiler and low pressure boiler stationary boiler so generally if you observe the boilers will be stationary but there are some small type of boilers like uh, five tube boilers single tube boilers so they are uh, portable they are they are compact in size and they are portable and uh, single tube boiler so only one tube will be there if there are multiple uh, tubes we are calling it as multiple tube boiler single tube boiler means the efficiency will be less uh, multiple tubes we are increasing to increase the efficiency that is performance so fluid fluidized bed and pulverized bed so fluidized so they were are going to use the sand along with the steam and pulverized the pulverized coal is uh, injected along with the air for produce for production of the fire so based on its application the name is come so see we will run again see internal there are different uh, boilers horizontal vertical vertical inclined uh, fire tube water tube externally fired internally fired force circulation boiler natural circulation boiler high high pressure boiler low pressure boiler stationary boiler portable boiler single tube boiler multi multi tube boiler fluidized bed boiler and pulverized bed boiler so these are the uh, different uh, <coughs> boilers and there can be some more also like electrical boiler okay so now we will uh, discuss about uh, these things uh, very shortly so horizontal vertical and inclined boilers so if the axis is uh, horizontal it is called as the horizontal boiler if the axis is vertical it is called as the vertical boiler if the axis is inclined it is called as the inclined boiler so <clears throat> the parts of the horizontal boiler can be easily inspected and repaired but this occupies more space when you compare with the vertical boiler vertical boiler axis occupies less space so when you compare the horizontal boiler and vertical boiler so horizontal boiler is good okay it can be easily repaired but it occupies more space vertical boiler occupies less space so observe here so this is the horizontal boiler so you can observe so hot gases so fire is here hot gases are uh, passing 
surrounding the water tubes okay and again uh, this is hot gas are going out that is smoke so this is the furnace and here you can observe the steam so first at the first stage water slowly it is getting heated one tube above so this is some less heat above, again above some more heated that means some amount of steam here again 50 percent of steam here again almost uh, steam so again here the steam will go out and our hot gases will go out like this so this is one of the example of this uh, horizontal boiler and if you observe this the vertical boiler so here the fire is there and these are the uh, gases and these are surrounded by the water and slowly the water will get heated and it will go out from this outlet the steam will there is a outlet for the escape of the steam and this is the outlet for escape of the gases so these gases will be almost losing their heat blue gases and if you observe here this is the incline if you observe these pipes so these are incline so the heat is going like this and going out and the incline the water in this incline pipes is getting heated and slowly it is converted into heat converted into steam so if your next thing is fire tube so in the name itself it is there so the gases will move in the tube and water will be surrounding the these tubes so the example for this type of tubes are Cochrane, Langshay and locomotive boilers. See Cochrane, Langshay and locomotive boilers. So these are the examples for the fire tube boilers. That means the fire will be inside the tube. The gases will be, the hot gases will be moving inside the tube and the water will be surrounding these tubes and this water absorbs the heat energy from these five tubes and it will convert into steam and the next thing is in water tube boilers the flue gases the fire will be surrounding the hot gases will be surrounding these pipes or the tubes and the water will be circulating in this tubes and while circulating they will get in contact with the fire so the water in the tube inside the tube will absorb this heat from this fire or the flue gas or the hot gases and it will get converted into the steam so the examples for this water tube virus are Bobcock, uh, Will, Wilcox, Stirling, and Arrow Virus. See, observe here. You can see the water tube versus the fire tube virus. You can observe in this picture. So, here you can observe this is the furnace. So, this is the hot gas is escaping from this outlet. This is the water inlet. So water is sent into this inside with this inlet and slowly the water is getting heated the water in the bottom getting heated and whenever it is converted in steam it is going upside and it is escaping from this it is moving out from this outlet so here you can observe the water is in the tubes and the fire is outside the tubes so that's why we are calling it as this as the water tube boiler. And if you observe this diagram, okay, the <coughs> the fire here, yeah, the fire is uh, 
this is this is a vertical axis and this is uh, horizontal axis actually so this is also uh, inside the water this is a, so actually this is a vertical axis and this is the horizontal axis uh, water tube boilers and here you can observe this fire tube boiler so this is the tube okay there is only single tube and surrounding this tube the water is there so fire is passed inside this tube hot gas is passed in this inside this tube and since the water is surrounding this tube this water will absorb the heat energy from this tube and they will become into steam the water will become into steam so if you compare this fire tube and water tube boilers the fire tube is relatively will be having small steam capacity or it is of low to medium capacity boiler steam pressure so the steam pressure is also low and generation capacity of the steam is low but it operates with oil we can operate with oil we can operate with gas or we can operate with coal or some solid fuels and also the thing advantage is that it is compact it is cheap it is portable and also if there is a fluctuations if there are more fluctuations we can easily deal the fluctuations with the help of the fire tube boilers fluctuation of steam demand can be met easily so this is the advantage of the fire tube boiler the disadvantage is it will take a long time to rise to produce the steam to a required pressure because it is of low to medium pressure boiler and also here you can observe the water and steam are both in the same vessel so in this case it is very difficult to obtain a steam obtain a high pressure steam and also the steam produced in the fire tube boiler is not very dry so this is a disadvantage of the fire tube boiler so if you go to the water tube boiler so you can observe so this is a water tube but it is inclined boiler also it is inclined tube boiler also so the water tube boiler if you compare the capacity if you compare the pressure it is very very high with the fire tube boilers so that's why it is used for uh, high steam demand and high pressure requirements so if you observe the capacity is from 4500 to 120000 kg per hour it is the capacity of the water tube boiler so if you observe this capacity you can say that it is a very huge thing it is not a compact thing okay so if you observe here so this is air and fuel uh, inlet and this is the combustion chamber and these are the water tubes okay so here is the water coming down towards the combustion chamber so whenever it is uh, get, it is getting in contact with this uh, fire and it is getting heated and it is converted into steam and it is going out without any circulate without any pump usage of the pump so it is natural circulation circulation is happening naturally and afterwards the steam is stored at the upper half of this boiler and water will be at the lower half of the boiler 
what is the advantage so that means uh, we can use this as a multi tube furnace so if we increase the number of tubes uh, we can increase more efficiency okay so the water flow is conventional the movement of water is much much faster okay and rate of heat transfer is high so since the rate of heat transfer is high the efficiency is also high so we can achieve a very high pressure can be achieved smoothly it can be achieved very smoothly what are the disadvantages it is costly it is a costlier boiler it is not compact it is not portable it is heavy okay so that's why it is difficult to transport and also it is complex so the construction is also difficult so if you compare this fire tube boiler and water tube boiler so fire tube fire will be in the tube water tube water will be in the tube generally internally fired the fire tube will internally fired water tube is uh, externally fired so operating pressure limits to 16 bars and where you come to the case of the water tube boiler it can be up to 100 bars next rate of steam production is lower so it is small the fire tube boiler is small small is size it is compact that's why the production is also lower rate of steam production is high because it is big in size it is not compact that's why rate of uh, production is high so since it is producing the fire tube boiler produces less amount of steam we cannot use it for uh, big power plants because it is producing less steam it is not suitable for big power plants whereas water tube boilers it produce more steam so we can use it for large power plants next thing is since the fire tube boiler is small it is compact it occupies less floor area and water tube boiler because it is heavy in size it occupies more area the advantage uh, another thing of fire tube is there is no necessity for water treatment because fire is going inside fire is moving in the tube so just you and the water will be surrounded but the water treatment is needed because there are more number of pipes moving inside the tubes and if you don't treat the water properly it may be a problem for the circulation and for the pipes and externally fired now we will see the externally and externally fired and internally fired tubes so when the fire is outside the boiler is known as externally fired boiler if the fire is outside the shell so what are these what are the examples bob cox wilcox and stirling boiler in case of internally fired boiler the furnace is located inside the shell so the examples are cochran langshire boilers next we'll see the forced and natural circulation boilers if the force in the forced circulation type of boiler the circulation of water is done by pump so it is not going uh, conventionally it's not moving conventionally so what are the examples velox lamont benson boilers are the examples of this forced circulation boilers in the natural circulation boilers we don't use the forced pumps 
okay it will happen naturally natural convention due to the application of the heat so we have seen here this is the example so it is going naturally we have in this boiler we have not used any pump so it is going it is happening conventionally the examples are Langshade, Bob Cox, Wilcox boilers. And stationary and portable. So now you can easily say which is small in size, it is uh, portable. Which is heavy in size, it is stationary. So that means the five tube boilers. A single and multi-type boiler. So if you use, use only one pipe, that is, we can call it as a single tube boiler. If you use number more than uh, one pipe, we can call it as the multi-tube boilers. Okay, example of single tube boiler is a Cornish boiler. And it is a special case. Generally, we, we are going to use multi-tubes because we want more efficiency, more amount of uh, pressure steam to be producer so the example for uh, multi-tube boilers is langshire bob cox and wilcox boilers and fluidized bed boiler and polarized boiler fluidized bed boilers means we will use particles are suspended in high velocity air steam so that is particle means sand so building fluidized bed okay bed a bed will be there in the boiler okay so along with the uh, high velocity system we will be using this sand so the combustion will be up to 4 840 to 950 centigrade and capacity is 0.5 to uh, 100 ton per hour so what are the fuels fuels coal Washery rejects rice husk and agriculture wastes. So this uh, with this diagram you can have an idea of this uh, fluidized bed. So this is the fluidized bed. So these are the sand particles. Okay, primary A. So it will be blowing the air continuously and. Uh, here the fuel will be there to continue the fire and sand will be moving up and down. So it will go in contact along with the fire, along with the fire. Okay. So not only fire, along with this fire, we'll be having this sand bed. So which increases the efficiency. So remaining fly ash, all this will be going out, steam. We will be sending the water and we are connecting the steam. The water will automatically gets converted into steam. So if you observe here, this is a single tube boiler. And polarized boiler. So here only the difference is we will be sending the polarized coal into the fire along with the air. So this is the air primary air and fuel and secondary air so this is second so along with this air we will be sending the polarized coal also which increases the efficiency the polarization itself is done for increasing the efficiency for firing capacity and nowadays we are using uh, mostly the electric boilers especially in the remote places so it has its uh, own advantages that is it is very easy and it is very clean when compared to the other boilers but what are the it is more popular because it is more simple it is more clean and uh, the disadvantage is it is costly it is costly and if you observe a boiler what are what are the constraints we have to think for selecting a boiler? So, first thing is working pressure and quality of steam. So, what is your necessity? So, you need a high pressure steam 
if you need a low pressure steam if you need a more amount of steam or less amount of steam so what are the first constraint is we will see for the working pressure and quality of steam and also the steam generation rate so more steam so within one hour how much steam you want so based on that you will select the boiler floor area so you can provide more floor area or less floor area that is also another constraints and accessibility for repair and inspection so for the water tube boilers accessibility for repair is easy when compared to the um, fire tube boilers or vertical tube boilers and also initial cost so this is very very important how much you are able to afford and fuel availability what is the fuel availability whether it is coal or gas or anything. and load how much load you want to meet so that much more load means you have to produce more steam and less load means uh, less steam and operating cost what is the operating cost we have to calculate and also maintenance cost we have to so these are the things you have to keep in mind when you are going for selecting a boiler on the classification of boilers we can do on different basis based on boiler axis so already we have discussed horizontal vertical and incline based on passage through boilers that is fire tube water tube based on method of fabrication package and shop assembled boilers based on nature of fuel source gas oil solid fuels based on working pressure high pressure and low pressure based on circulation method natural and forced circulation methods so this is you will give the so what are the things uh, we have to do for uh, getting longevity and better performance so generally you have to go for safety checks at regular intervals okay and also we have to inspect the temperature okay properly so it should not go to the overheating where the boiler may blast and we have to keep the smoke detectors and alarms for low fuel and pressure for safe functions so this will help us to find any problem is there and stop the damage or blast the chimneys vents and outlets must be cleaned they should be clean they should be clean otherwise uh, there will be some obstruction for good productivity of the boilers so now we will see the condensing boiler this is the boiler where you will be using uh, two heat exchangers and we will be using the natural gas and also this is able to absorb the heat from the flue gases also so that's why the efficiency of this condensing boiler is uh, more okay so it is up to 98% so the efficiency of this condensing boiler is 98% so this is a, there is no doubt that this is the most sustainable boiler uh, is, is with high efficiency next thing is oil boiler so the oil oil boiler comes next to this condensing boiler with 86% of efficiency and <coughs> what is the but the fuel here is not the natural gas of course there we are be using the natural gas so next thing is uh, natural gas boilers so since we are using the natural gas we are calling it as the natural gas boilers and uh, this is the here the fuel is the natural gas so generally what are the Uh, parts the parts will be burner so where the air mixes with the fuel for the 
combustion for production of the fire okay so this is there will be a burner and uh, we should keep the burner in regular checkup whether it is functioning properly or not and the combustion chamber already we have seen so this is for uh, compulsory and heat exchanger uh, different cases will be having different uh, heat exchangers so the condensed boiler we are using the two heat exchangers and controls so controls are very very important to regulate the temperatures so if there is more temperature there will be chance of uh, damaging and the supply lines so the output of the boiler will be steam and after that uh, circulation again that steam will come back and condense and come back to the return lines and again come back as the water so this should be maintained this should be cleaned properly and the circulation pump in the force type we will be using the circulation pump so this is the thing where we will bring this uh, uh, condensed water back and recirculate and convert into steam an exhaust stack which includes the chimney where this uh, fire will be going out so this uh, exhaust stack should be maintained properly uh, and with neat with neatness and the conclusion is that we have to uh, regularly we should check all the things we should uh, maintain properly we should clean all these things we should check the temperatures uh, we should uh, keep the properly uh, this uh, temperature detecting devices so this will help uh, in increasing the longevity of the uh, boiler and life of the boiler and also it will uh, avoid the accidents the or damages or blasts in the boiler so with this we have our topic is over so in our topic we have seen first thing is what is a boiler what is the so boiler is nothing but it is a vessel where we are keeping the water and we are heating with the fire okay so next thing is what is the principle so we are keeping the water in a vessel and with some uh, fuel source the coal or the gas or oil we are burning and we are trans we are uh, keeping that fire in contact with this vessel or these pipes so where this water will uh, the heat in this fire is transformed to the water and the water is because of that high temperature it will be converted into steam so this is the principle and the number of what are the types of boilers so based on the functions based on the shape based on the axis we have divided into so many things horizontal axis vertical axis inclined axis and uh, fire tube water tube um, externally fire internally fire force circulation natural circulation high pressure boiler according to the pressure of the steam obtained <coughs> low pressure boiler and uh, stationary boiler and <coughs> portable boilers number of tubes number of pipes we have used a single tube multi tube uh, what are the what is the bed fluidized bed and polarized fuel boiler so that is application so horizontal so here we have seen the pipes are horizontal vertical the pipes are vertical inclined the pipes are vertical uh, inclined and <coughs> water tube so this is the water tube vertical boiler this is water tube horizontal boiler and fire tube boiler so the fire is inside and water is surrounding so this is the example and this is the water tube boiler this is, and also this is the natural circulation they we have not used any a pump here and the comparison so this is cheap this is costly this is more if highly efficient highly productive this is less efficient less productive this is portable this is not portable this is easily repair inspected and repairable this is not easily inspected and repairable and uh, 
single tube, multi tube, fluidized bed. So here you can see the steam along with the sand. The air will be blowing and this will be bombarding with this uh, pipe where the water is circulated. And also this is a single tube boiler. And pulverized boiler along with this uh, air, we will be sending the pulverized coal. An electric boiler is recently very famous because it's uh, more clean, more easy, but it is more costly. And what are the constraints we are going? So, more how much steam we want? What is the cost? What is the maintenance cost? What is the pressure you want? What is the area you are able to afford? All these things we will consider. So, we will be dividing these boilers on the basis of axis on the basis of uh, uh, passage, on the basis of fabrication, on the basis of uh, uh, force and natural circulation, on the basis of pressure and on the basis of circulation method. And long utility, we have to regularly inspect and regularly check the temperatures and we have to clean things and we will be having that uh, uh, controllers. So, oil, oil boiler means we will be using the oil as the uh, oil for the firing, natural means the gas, natural gas for the firing, burner means uh, burner, everywhere we will be having the burner and the condensing boiler is the most efficient boiler with 98% of efficiency with the two heat exchangers and uh, controls. So, we will be having that controls where uh, <coughs> The water temperature is inspected. Okay. And supply lines, output and return lines, sending lines and return lines, and circulated pumps in the course uh, circulated. Exhaust stack, which includes the chimney, all these things. Generally, it will be constructed with the help of the bricks. Uh, and also, this should be maintained uh, cleanly. And conclusion is the, the best way to keep your commercial boiler working as efficiently and therefore as cheaply as possible is to have maintained on a regular basis. Okay, so you have to remember that these boilers are volatile. If you uh, don't pay attention, they may explode with this high pressure. Okay, so that's why you have to. Uh, maintain compulsory you have to check the temperatures and you have to keep them cleanly which increases the longevity which increases the efficiency and also which avoids the blasts okay thank you thank you very much thank you for listening like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates